Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone you're in, whatever time it is for you. This is the Wix Online meeting number 16. We're rolling along. We have a short agenda, I think, today, but maybe we'll get some open discussion because there are a bunch of emails that I know I haven't had a chance to respond to yet when people ask questions. So, on that note, just want to remind everybody that uh, these meetings are recorded for those people that are unable to make this time slot, and uh, they'll get posted up on YouTube. Um, on the agenda, all I have is uh, triage for today, and then any questions or comments of these that come up. So as always, if you have questions or things you'd like to discuss, start typing them over in the IM window, and we'll discuss those. And while you're thinking about all the fascinating concepts you'd like to discuss, I think we'll go jump into uh, triage. Ready, Bob? I am set to go. All right, triage. Here we go, off the website. And here we are. Um, it's awesome when I look. I'm like, ah, this will be short, and then two bugs come in in one day. But it's all right. Our features. Yeah, these are features, so. Interesting. I guess we'll just start at the top like we've been doing. Because, uh, yeah, we'll just do that. Um, secure strings variables that use secure string instead of system string to manage the engine class. Oh. Have a password. I'd like to have that come down. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Although it'll still go to the engine, the real native engine, without any of the secure string features. Yeah, because we don't, I don't know how you, well, uh, yeah, we don't do any of that. Burn. Um, um, I'm not against it. We probably should put that comment in here that it would go into burn unless they, unless we finish it all the way into burn. Or that, I guess that would have to be part of the consideration. Right, right. Otherwise, it's, you know, at what level do you do the cast? Or mm -hmm. whatever the... Yeah, right, the transformation. So I'm, I'm not against it by any means. It certainly seems reasonable. Better security all around. We also have the password variables, so maybe they should, if with this feature, they could get stored there. Sorry, repeat that? We have variables that are marked uh, password or something. I forget how that's going to do it. Oh, yeah. And so you could say that the engine should take those variables and make sure that they're always encoded correctly, too. Yeah, hidden. Hidden, sorry, yes. What was I saying, password? Yeah, hidden. Hidden could be the same thing. Um, so, yeah, could do that. Now, the trick then turns into... Is it breaking? The additive won't be a problem. If it's all on the managed side. Oh, yeah, but how interesting is it only on the managed side, I guess? Right, um, right, right. I mean, if you don't do it on the BA side, you're kind of like, well, all you did was the transition, whatever. Oh, well, that's true. But I guess as long as you could still get hidden, it's not breaking as long as the thing. If we did hidden and made those secure as well, that if you called the strings, you would still get the blank, the normal string out, then it would all work out. So it basically would come down to, if you have a hidden variable and you don't want it, and this feature is implemented all the way from the engine through the managed interface all the way up, and you don't want it ever visible as a normal string, don't ever ask for it through the interface. Ask for it as a normal string, because it will get decoded into a normal string for you. Always go through secure methods. Right, right. That would be the way to do this thing fully. Because I don't know what good it is just to do this in the managed side. I mean, it's the same problem. Crash, core dump, you know, you know. And you have the variables in the engine as well. Yeah, yeah, true. So, anyway, I, totally reasonable feature. And if we could do it in an additive way, I think it could be nice to have in 3X. For sure. Volunteering, so... Yeah, uh, all right, Sean, um, this might be a good thing, if you have it and you have a little bit of time, it might be a good thing to write a quick uh, uh, Wix improvement uh, proposal for, just to make sure that we cover all the, because it's security, it might be good to have a couple people think about the security angles of it real quick. And really, this could be like a, you know, maybe a four paragraph whip, like, don't go overboard on typing, just real, because I think we might think about some things that would be good for us to write down, in the, particularly the consideration sections. The WIP template is 
documented in WIP0, John. So if you're looking for how to get to them, go to WIP template 0, and it talks about how to, or go to WIP0, and it talks about how to find the WIP template and all that. And if it's not good enough, then let us know, and we should improve WIP0 to say how that works, because <laughs> that's where it's supposed to be. Oh, no, I've lost my mouse cursor again. What is the deal with this? Only after a while. It's Link. Let's see if I can do this with tabs, uh, tabbing around. Add binder variables. How do I open this in a new one? I guess I'll just hit back. All right. Binder variables for MSI properties in a bundle. We have this, some of this, don't we? I don't think we have the properties. Well, we do. We have some of the properties. Like, I know you can get, like, we get the property, the version number, I'm pretty sure, I thought. Oh, right. Do, if we oh, don't, If we don't do this, then... <laughs> we discussed doing it, and we didn't get it done. Um, and it's in my brain somewhere as a thing that we <laughs> thought, oh, we should do this. Um, cool. Yes, if we haven't done this, we should totally do this. And I think it's great that there are people bringing it up. So yes, I agree. This would be a reasonable thing to do. We should talk about the correct way to do the names. Yeah. Oh, I know where this gets hard. The challenge is the ID and the property, when we use dots, can be both. Oh. It's, it's difficult to figure out where the package ID starts and ends and the property starts and ends because both of them can have dots in it. So I think that's the hard part of this. But that's an implementation detail. I totally think this is a good thing to do if we can figure out how to solve it. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyway. Let's see if I hit back. Do I go back? Yes, and it remembers where I'm at. So awesome. This isn't too bad. I didn't write this um, bug UI to be accessible, but it's not horrible. Um, all right. So on to this bug. Ugh. It's failing. Failed to add that. I wonder what version of Wix they're using. That would be good to know. Um, otherwise, yeah, I agree. It looks like a bug. I mean, if it's not fixed, we should fix it. So. Which one is that? Is that the... Oh, the... already exists. Already exists? Yeah. Uh, well, then we we should do something better here. I agree that we should do something better here. Because that's not very helpful. Does that mean no op or at least a better error message? Okay. And maybe a no op. I don't. I don't. I didn't do enough of the IS seven stuff to know what happens here. Yeah. I, I yeah. know better with IS six. The IS seven API, I just haven't got into deep of, into deep for. So anyway, yes. Yeah. Um. So, all right. So, allow administrators to redefine payload cache locations. Um, um, so, if you have things you want to just, yeah. So, we have a whip on this. Are we? We. This is. I mean, we could take this in 3.9, right? This, I think, was additive. It looked all good once we get the updates and all that into it, right? Bob, uh, this could be opened. I don't see why not. Yeah, yeah. everything was, you know. It was all good. It only, it yeah. only kicked in when you wanted to move it, so. Yeah. All right. Yeah, no, cool. So uh, I think we could take this open. And worse happens, it doesn't make 3.9 and we move to 3x but it would still be open because we'd still take the feature. Yeah. All right. Which means, all right, and by the way, this is a perfect example where there's a, a whip that refers to the feature. The feature is where we do the scheduling. So like right now we're talking about opening it in 3.9, which should be fine, but you'll be able to say, oh, no, it didn't make 3.9, and we'll move it to 3x or move it to 3.10 if we think it's going to make 3.10 or you know whatever we do there. And we don't go back and keep muddying the whip with what version number it is. That's always tracked by the feature. So the feature tells us where it goes and the whip tells us more 
in depth detail about how it should work and why it works that way. So there we go. All right, this fun one. So Heath is here, um, and we were talking about this before. Um, and basic came down to should we bother signing packages? And more and more, we're seeing more and more cases where I just don't think it's we should bother. Uh, no, we didn't. We didn't, ex Heath. We didn't accept this bug. All right, so we didn't accept this bug because it was confusing with the stuff about doing the checking the authentic code and stuff like that. Um, if we think the authentic code is unnecessary, then I think we should open, we should close this bug because it has too much stuff, or we have to rewrite this bug. I don't care which way we want to do it, and create a feature or something that says remove authentic code hashing from burn. Very clear, clean. That's what we're doing. Um, and then we can do whatever for that bug. Well, now, this, this is talking about removing authentic code signing support from packages, payloads right. in general. Yes. But not necessarily the bundle. No, 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 no. Bundle still definitely be signed. Okay, good. Um, but do we want to remove it or just default to not doing it I'm inclined to just remove it but I guess we could change suppress to be enabled right right um, um, I mean the reason I'm asking is that it's a lot of people would be happy with hashing but I'm wondering if there aren't groups that will still want it um, or sorry most groups will be happy with hashing. I'm wondering if some people will still want authentic code checking. I don't know. It seems kind of lame, I suppose. But I, it's the. I mean, we're better off just doing the hash and adding the SHA-256 hash that for operating systems that support it and stuff like that. I don't know. Keeping authentic code. Now, I want to take all the. I don't want to. And before people start going, oh, cool, I'm going to delete code from burn. It's like, no, no, we want to take most of the code that's in burn, and we need to pull it out into dutil, honestly, because I don't want to lose all of the knowledge we've gained about dealing with authentic code signatures, because I believe the code we have now is good code. Right. <laughs> we just don't want to put it in burn. I think we want to put it somewhere in the um, in, in dutil so we could use it for the time when we want to actually verify things. And like it's go like the discussion is going on. It is the th statement is, we're not going to authentic code verify payloads of a bundle. We're just going to hash verify them because hashing is far more uh, successful. And if the bundle is already signed, it can vouch for through the verification of uh, the hashes will vouch for the payload. So it, uh, the security right. is still closed based off of the um, the signature on the bundle itself. So. That all works. So, would would we be closing a scenario? Um, so one of the yes. if if you blow, if you did a download bundle, a web yes. bundle, yes, and did not. Sorry, do we do we always check the hash today? You yeah, yeah, we always check the hash. Can you suppress that? No, because okay. of the because the hash. It's in the transition from the uh, per user mode to per machine mode. That transition, we have to verify the hash of the payload as it moves across that transition. Because remember, right. they're downloaded in the per user side. Before we can put them in the secure cache, we need to verify that they're the correct thing. So we always verify it before it jumps that. Okay, so we're not we're not by dropping authentic code. We're not we're not uh, breaking a scenario where, in my head, I pictured you could, you know, update a payload. On your on your web server, and as long as it was authentic code signed, it didn't matter that it was different. No, you're right. So that scenario, we would be breaking doing this. However, I've been going over my head in that because that technically works today, except practically, I don't think it works because you can only change things on the server um, in such small ways that yeah, it, it would that, have to be a minor, a small update to an yeah. MSI, for example. But yes. an XE, an XE could be completely different. Yes, but there, um, yeah, true. But 
it <laughs> the problem then is you all your detection and stuff like that practically it doesn't get pretty much that it doesn't get well and Keith is pointing out the 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 real thing that you want to do instead of that which is you know to have some kind of a phone home update right that self update yeah which is what Jacob is working on most of the way through, if we can only if we can agree on where we're putting the breaking changes, um, right? So I, I I mean it's fantastic. I love it. It's, it's going to be great. All right. So in general, I think the consensus here is that we should probably nuke this. Um, the only question I have is, should we send out one more mail widely to people that might care? My my concern is, it takes a lot of understanding, and I don't exactly know who we'd go ask to get a good consensus of. Oh no, you missed this one case where this is useful. Um, but I'm just not coming up with it. Um, yeah. Not, uh, yeah. Okay. So. Uh, which users blog post? Yeah, maybe. You know, I'll 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 take it on myself to write the blog post, get it out there before we decide to do that. All right. So I think the end result is let's make this bug go away because it's it's confusing about the whole stream port and, and doing authentic signature stuff like that. I don't think this is this is interesting at Goddard's discussion. I don't think we want to take this bug because we don't want to do authentic code signature. We want to take another feature that says remove authentic code signatures from burn payloads. Um, um, don't you want the... Uh, sorry, you still want... I think you still want at least the... One and two bug fixes. The one and two. Always verify the payload hash against the manifest. Oh. The changes are still probably useful, even if we want. Well, to except two things. is only necessary because of well, maybe one. Right, but that's why I was. Don't, don't we want that one? I see. Wait, so this change will end up doing, three. it'll hash twice. I, this will end up hashing twice? Payloads might have existed, right. Well, not right. All right, but if we go to a place like this, this is why this bug is really confusing. So it seems like if we just verify the hash of the payload, then when you, if you had this case where you had pre-release software and release software mixed and matched, um, when it went to move it, it go the authentic code signature. See, the authentic code signature won't be in place anymore. You only have hashing now. So when you hash the file, you go wait. That may be signed with a signature that matches something else, but that's not the exact file I want. And it'll say no, and it'll say give me the correct one. And then the BA will go and say, oh, the file's here, but need to delete it, and then continue on. Right. So if you don't authenticate sign the files, it works correctly, which is why I don't think we need this bug at all. Everything works fine, except for authentico signatures, which are incorrectly finding files that match signatures but are the wrong files. that makes sense? So the root of this bug is the fact that the files are authentic code signed and burn is not verifying the exact hash of the file. It's just verifying that the thing is signed correctly with the right, you know, by the same person and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, no, right. I'm so we don't need this bug at all <clears throat> if we stop doing authentic code verification and burn. Because then burn will go, this pre-release file does not match the release file I expected to find this location. Get me the release file. And to be like, oh crap, go download from internet. Done. Does that make sense, Bob? Am I? Have I? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I, I, okay. I you went quiet I'm on me. I was like, well, I'm I'm still I'm still waffling to be honest about dropping authentic code checking in 3x. Okay. All right. I'm I'm concerned about that. If anyone is taking advantage of what it currently lets you do. 
Um, okay. I, I, I'm not, you know, suggesting we not do it quite yet. I'm well, just... no, so that's why I'm like, I think this bug should go away because I don't think it's, I, I, we don't want to be verifying the files twice. Like, that's, if they're big, it's just going to slow things down a lot more. I think it could, so I, I'm inclined to go, we don't want this, the way to fix this issue is to remove authentic code signing, in my opinion. Okay. Um, well, I, I, sorry, I can't tell from the description. Um, I'm fine if the bug goes away. I'm, except, um, except if we don't take it. If we don't take the change to only okay. authentic code All signing. right, fine. So let's add a comment on this that goes, we'll be considering this for Treasury needs to consider this again based on the results of whether we're removing authentic code in 3x. I, but we don't want to be doing this. Even if we, I don't, oh. yeah. The problem, yeah, it's just nasty because this fixing this will affect everybody. If we fix this prob, if we fix this every bundle will get slower. That if the things are authentic code. Sorry, why? Because what ha the way to do this is you basically you go, I'm going to authentic code this file, and then I'm going to hash it. Okay, but it's a hash of a file you already have, as Keith points out, it's local. Yeah, but if it's big files, you're reading the whole file again, building up the hash and doing all I mean, it's just all the disk I.O. all over again. True. It's not authentic code slow, but... <laughs> yeah. So I guess, yeah... <laughs> I'm, I'm not worried about this, the... security issues here, it's the performance issues. Yeah, it, this... So the, the thing we're worried about are the people that took advantage of this in 3x, that were expecting authentic code to, to be able to update files that's what we're talking about, is the people that were expecting authentic code to allow them to update files in the bundle, and somehow that will just work. Um, I think that's the only use case. That, that's, well, well, that is the only one that I, I know of. That's, that makes authentic code, quote, unquote, better than hashing, but of course it has all the bad things. And and I'm with Blair. I don't think that ever, it just worked. You, it, you had to be very, very careful to make that work. I, I disagree. I don't think you had to be that careful. You had, to, you, you had to keep the product version the same. The product code, upgrade code. Product, product code. You're never going to change the upgrade code, so that's always going to be the same. I'm, I'm saying you could, you could easily rebuild an MSI that's completely different from the one you had, and it would still work. Right. Yeah, right. And you can you can fix a cab, like Keith points out. You can fix a cab. Uh, you know, if your files are if your cabs are all laid out. Yeah, that's what you could do. Yep. I re and again, I'm not saying this is a good idea. I'm 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 strictly coming at this from from the idea of breaking uh, things. breaking three X. Yeah. I'm mostly okay. I, I'm, I'm actually more interested in something he pointed out about uh, revoking the, the certs. It's no one would care about that except maybe users. I'm wondering if that's a bigger deal. Revoking the cert for a particular package inside a bundle versus revoking the cert of the bundle? Payloads don't have to be signed the same as the as the bundle. No, they don't. But 
Yeah, you're here. right. Uh, the primary primary case is going to be covered by revoking the cert that signed the bundle. So. Uh, and if you don't, then you're basically just the bundle's failing for really weird ways. I mean, that's a really strange thing to push to your users. Here, we revert the certificate for this thing that's inside no, the I'm, thing that you I'm, try to install. <laughs> and you're like, it's failing to install. It's like, yeah, we revoked the certificate for some subpart of a piece of software. It's like, really? That was the experience you wanted? Well, no, no. I'm specifically, I'm specifically thinking of something that, you know, got revoked for, you know, malware or whatever. Right. But, but you're right. It, it's it would affect the cert on the bundle as well. So it's not a, yeah, not something I'm gonna lose sleep over. Yeah, I mean, then you're trying to say I want any bundle that tries to slip in this particular thing block them that way. It's a crazy way. To go. At that point, they'll just go, cool, I'm just going to suppress authentic code certification, and they got by you. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah it's, it's not a security thing. So, yeah, no, he, you know, the, I don't know that, I'm not worried about the security implications of going only to hashes. Um, it is the case that Bob brings up of we're technically removing a feature, um, a functionality. Right? You could call it a feature um, yeah. from Burn in 3x. Um, it's a feature that's broken, as this bug and all the reports of authentic code things not working well. Um, <laughs> Um, all right, I think that's fair. So let's leave it open. Um, let me write the blog entry that basically goes out and says, here's the story, here's what's going on. Um, we have the option of fixing this in 3x and making everybody's life easier, because most people don't even know, right? They don't even know they're getting authentic code signatures and stuff. So it would only be the people that know. Somehow try to reach them, which of course is always a challenge, but um, would we... I'm inclined to take it in four, even if we don't take it in three. Oh, I'd take it in four, no problem. Okay. And truthfully, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm, th this is, this is one of the, it's a gray area about, about compatibility. I've, I've been thinking about a blog post on the idea, because, because there are layers of, of compatibility in 3X. Removing a feature that, you know, we can point out, look, it, it's tough to make work, and it's... And it doesn't work in these scenarios, by the way. So if you're using it, you might have reconsidered it, knowing that it doesn't work in these cases. Right, right. <laughs> All that. So. Uh, uh, you know, even, even if it's a, a breaking change, you know, uh, there, there, are, there are layers to it, and, and I would certainly consider still taking it in 3X. Um, but, you know, if you, if you make your blog post and, like, you know, one person goes, oh, Okay, no big deal. Then yeah. I'll have even less of a problem. All right. Um, all right. And I guess I will. I will go do that, and then we'll see where it takes us from there. So I guess this bug gets to live untriaged another day. Um, and we'll come back to it. And yeah, there is. And you know, he puts out we could always do the suppressing your validation, changing the default on that to something else. But that's almost, I guess it's less breaking. At least you can get the old behavior back. Right, right, right. And maybe that's what we have to do in 3X. If someone comes up like we have to do it, then we keep it 3X, but we turn it off by default and then we remove it in 4. Yeah. And if you set it to yes, we mark it deprecated such that if you turn it um, to yes, we're like, uh, you can do this, but it doesn't but work real well. And uh, you can do this, but note that this bug was never fixed, so you're going to have this problem, and note that this is going away in four. So yep. probably should stop trying to do this. And that's, Are you sure you want to do this? If, if we think it's worth doing all the work to do that, then yeah, versus just do the work to move it. Then that, that's kind of the debate of where should we do more work. Yeah, that. All that. Although, truthfully, moving the code into DUDL, is also a fair chunk of work. Um, yes, removing it from burn is straightforward. Moving it to util is a bit more work. However, um, it will be more a, worth it. 
well worth it because it took us a long time to get that code to be correct. Yeah. For all the crazy cases that happen. All right. So supposedly we have another bug out here. So let's go back and see that. Hey, look, we have another one. Whoa, what's this? Uh, what the heck? Harvest burn metadata when linking in as a package to another. Oh, this is bun burn. This is a bundle package. It's a burn package. Yay, bundle package. We should totally do this. Yep. Yes, this is bundle package. We should totally do that. There's an open feature. Yeah, there's already a feature open for this. Can you go dupe this against that one? I find it. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is... Yeah, this is... We should totally do this feature. I'd love for this feature to be done. <laughs> I just didn't have time to do it myself. I think it should be bundle package, not burn package, don't you? It's kind of funny. Yeah, right? You're in a bundle, and the bundle has a chain of packages, and here's a bundle acting like a package. It's a bundle package. <laughs> and somewhere in here we insert the turtles joke. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> then, then I'm okay with it. <laughs> uh, but I don't know which the turtle is. The package the turtle or the bundle the turtle? Probably the package is the turtle and the bundle is the elephant? I don't know. Um. <laughs> yeah, definitely like madness. All right, so all of you homework, all of you that are still on the call have to go figure out what the heck that just meant. All right, so Heath has asked a question about XP given its life cycle. Is that the dependencies um, thing? The dependencies bug, I expect. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to similar it's like yeah um so we're burn will always have this deficiency on xp maybe i don't know i mean have, have we root caused it is no this, no is this, but, okay the the reports that i've seen about the dependency problem is that something on xp when you restart or you do something um they're nuking all keys in the installer key that isn't there. So it's like maybe the, when a installer wakes up and decides to delete anything it doesn't recognize or something else, who knows exactly. Or maybe it's some weird thing between the mirroring between 64-bit and 32-bit that they got wrong and ends up nuking it or something like that. Um, but it's like, yeah, in XP, dependencies might get broken and then it turns into how much do we want to do for a ginormous bug that will have to be, you know, who knows what that would be breaking to the extreme and we'd have to find a new home for the dependencies key which handles all the, you know, scenarios that we put dependency keys there for and all that. Um, um, and all that stuff. So it's like, yeah, well then maybe it doesn't work on XP. Well, so, so his point is interesting. Is it a mistake that Burn uses that key? Maybe. There are a lot of advantages to using that key. Um, and given where it's at, mostly due to the mirroring across the 32-bit, 64-bit hives. Interesting. Okay, mistake. Keith <laughs> right. yes, makes a very good, a very good clarification. Mistake? No, it was intentional. Good idea? Maybe not. <clears throat> was it in error? Error in execution or error in judgment? Um, maybe the latter. Um, so anyway, that, that's a good question. Um, anyway, this bug's going to go away. And at this point, I think we're on to PowerPoint, so we can go here, questions, come, which is what we're doing now. So, oh, i got to remove that triage is next. I still haven't done that. Um, triage is not next. Questions and comments now. So, um, anyway, uh, I, I'm... I'm a little concerned with the idea that we can, you know... <laughs> The, the corpse isn't, the corpse is still moving. I think I'll go for a walk. It's still alive. Um, this is XP. Um, yes, sorry. <clears throat> the XP corpse is still alive. It's still kicking. It's, you know, still over 20% of, of the market. Yes, it will, it will drastically go down, you know, 
over the next how long? I, I don't disagree. Um, I'm I'm a little concerned that we can, you know, uh, just feel so harsh toward it. Um, that said, I'm. This is enough work that maybe you know. It, it wouldn't be done in a reasonable time frame versus um, XP. XP. I, I honestly don't know how long it's going to take to implement it, but it, it's not trivial to get it right. Yeah, you know, exactly. Wow, well, 2009, it wasn't, well, yeah, it was a while ago, but, but yeah, you know, there was, until Windows 7 came along, so I, I guess I'm inclined to keep the bug open, right? The bug is open. Am I going to fix it personally? No. If someone wants to come through and do the work to fix it and do all that kind of stuff, not going to stop them, which turns into, was it a good idea? Maybe it wasn't. Maybe we need to go find another thing that gives us the same attributes for that key in a place that doesn't fail in this particular scenario in XP. So I, I'm, I'm all for that. Yeah, so Sean, I just looked, and Blair just said the same thing, I just looked at those two bugs. They do seem reasonable to dupe, as far as I could tell, so you can go ahead and dupe them and just take them, I think, because you've got them fixed or whatever. So I think you can go do all that work yourself, Sean. Looks good. And thank you for asking. I do appreciate you asking and all that. So anyway. Um... All right, so it'd be cool if we could figure out the exact circumstances that this bug happens in. Um, Again, I, I'm totally fine for people to go hunt that bug down and come down and answer, and it's on my list to answer the, e to answer the email. The guy's like, what's the status of the bug? The status of the bug is open. We acknowledge that if it is a real problem, Someone should fix it. Like that'd be great. If someone wants to fix it, go and do all the work, all that kind of stuff, that'd be great. Um, I, I'm not against any of that. And it will work better on XP. Awesome. Yep. Just like any other bug. So if he wants to fix it, I'm all for it. Um, so anyway, let's see. Uh, someone else asked a question here. Heath asked about numerics not being evaluated as bools when used standalone. Only spent a little time looking through. Oh, well, that would not be the intention. Um, so yeah, I mean, file a bug if if you find that it's true, file a bug, and we'll triage it and figure out where to put it. Um, always the easiest thing if you find a bug. No, don't open a bug based on a hypothesis. Open a bug saying, "Yeah, I saw it. It didn't work." <laughs> We'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. that sucks." And yeah, we'll he, sit that, here and think that, about it. The hypervisor thing—that's a strain. And strings behaving consistently with MSI, which is not fantastic. It's, but if a str yeah, it's stupid, but MSI says if a string is non-empty, it's true, right? Oh, well, then never mind. Well, if these are bugs, then we can fix them. If nothing else, we can fix them in four, and it'll be great. I mean, you know, we can... Make it better in four. I'm, I'm all, and this is that discussion we had a couple of weeks ago. Maybe you haven't seen the video, or maybe I haven't posted it. One of those two. But we need to start thinking about, you know, four being the place where we can start breaking things. We should not be holding ourselves back, going, "Oh my gosh, I can't do it because three X can't take it." No, we should be fixing it. Fix it four. Carry on. It'll be great. Um, cool. So that's that. I need to get back to Jacob Hoover's thing and continue that discussion about the way to handle self-updates. Um, that's on my list. I was hoping he'd be here today and we could kind of kick it around, but it doesn't look like he was able to make it, which is fine. Um, that's the one big thing I think that's open. I don't know of anything else that's out there right now that's been really... I have a number of pull requests, some from you and a couple from Sean that I will be getting to in the next couple of days, I think. Oh, okay. Yes, because uh, uh, at FireGiant, we got the whole inline directory syntax working, and it is glorious. 
Yeah, I really want. I don't want to look at. It. I just want to see it. it it's time. so freaking awesome. Even the the protected private thing. That's actually pretty freaking awesome as well. Yeah. Um, there are some very very cool features. <laughs> they are very cool features, and they work. So it's like awesome. It is so awesome, actually. I'm really happy with it. Um, not done. Need to go through. We need to go through all the IDs and get them all auto-generating and stuff like that. But um, most of the inline directory syntax stuff is handled now. Which is, it's freaking cool. Anyway, um, I need, I'm going to write a blog post about the work we did there, so people can kind of get excited about. It. I think that's probably going to be the feature. People start going, oh, four. Oh, and I found the the bug. I hunted down the bug for uh, Wix 4.0 failing to install. <laughs> that turned out oh, really easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of lame, but yeah. It's kind of sad. Nobody else is like, oh, it doesn't install, it doesn't install. I'm like, well, did you look at the code? Did you look at the code? You've been like, oh, yeah, clearly. Just sent a pull request, but it's easier to complain than to go fix it yourself. So, anyway, well, on that note, I got nothing else. Um. Ah, uh, so... Sean has asked, because this has come up, how I could tell that line endings were different in my pull request. It turns out that whatever CodePlex is doing did not does not respect the line endings correctly, so they showed it on their side that the line endings were the same. It was when I pulled it into my repo locally, and then I look at the diffs before I push them, just to make sure it looks all good and you know the, the tree is as clean as it can be, given how dirty our tree is. And that's where I saw that your the history had basically been a whole block of red and a whole block of green, which means that, it, in my diffing, that was just in and out. So, Sean, the, that usually means that somehow you committed your files with line feeds and the other one was CRLF and then it didn't get merged in the end. So, it's usually a matter of going through and just resetting your repo uh, based off that link that we had in the mail thread where you just kind of nuke everything and then it should straighten everything out. The line endings have been a horrible, horrible pain in the Git repo as I was writing because our stuff has just been so confused. Um, I'm hunting down. It, still, the debate comes up mostly in my own head with myself about moving to GitHub because I'm not been excited about the CodePlex or their rate at which they're doing things. Um, if GitHub adds one more feature uh, to their releases, they added releases, um, but they don't keep track of counts of downloads, which we actually have used a number of times um, for various things. Um, and someone, I tweeted it out, and someone said it's on their to-do list. Um, Eric, you think they've done it? I, I looked. I don't see it, um, but it's possible I'm not looking in the right place. But anyway, um, I, what, if we move to GitHub, one of the things I'm going to be bringing up is, do we abandon history? Like, literally, break history, move into a clean repro with all the line endings and everything set correctly, knowing that it will look like our project started at the day we moved into GitHub, simply so we can get our repo cleaned out. Um, there would be advantages to getting the, getting the repo clean. A lot of them, especially since I've had a couple of the GitHub guys been very helpful, occasionally come in and look at Wix, um, and they go, oh my, what the heck has happened to your repro? And they're not looking at the source code. They're looking at the .git directory. and <laughs> like They have tools that they know how to look in that stuff that I don't understand. I'm like, I don't know. I didn't do it. I don't think. Yes, and Blair, we would definitely leave what's in CodePlex for history. We basically go, if you want to see the world before this point in time, it's go here. And then if you want to come to GitHub, go here. I really don't like the idea of doing that because it's going to mess up all kinds of history stuff out there. They're going to be like, oh, look, your project started in the year 2014, uh, which wouldn't be great, but gosh, if it would clean up our world, maybe we do it. And maybe we do it at the end of, you know, if 3.9 and 4.0, if they release at a similar time frame, which is possible, then maybe we just kind of freeze everything and go 4.1 and 4 and 3.10 will be clean over in the new repo and we'll just get it all clean over there. So, um, anyway, we'll see what happens there. Um, that that so there is a long answer to your question about line endings, Sean. <laughs> it's a mess, and it frustrates the crap out of me. And I lost like two to three days of my life trying to get that 
straightened out. And even that's when I'm fortunate I was able to get one of the GitHub guys to be nice enough to help. And they were like, oh my gosh, no wonder you can't get this right. I was basically seeing line endings change as I integrated changes from one branch to another. From 3.9 to 4.0, the line endings were changed. So I was constantly ending with, and there were different files, files I didn't even touch. They're constantly flipping back and forth. It was a nightmare. <laughs> it was like I couldn't get to a stable state of white space. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, yeah it That's was bad. Cool. It was bad. It was really bad. And part of the problem also was that I didn't understand enough of the underpinnings to get that working out or something. Yeah, so um, anyway, um, and Blair, we could still use Codeplex for downloads, but my my dream is that we get down to only like two sites, because I don't think we can get down to one, but two sites where we have just, you know, our pretty front end and all that kind of stuff with our downloads and all of our extra tracking and stuff we do with our special way of doing bugs as we do, and then a repository of all our code and a place where we can put official downloads that can handle the download hit and the big weight, you know, and that kind of stuff. Don't, don't um, forget, don't forget mail. And mail list. Well, no, actually, mailing list. Um, Eric, who's on the, who's on the, I am actually has a thing that's kind of started. He's he's laid out a couple things for us, and I just need to do the work to uh, experiment with it. And when he did it, I got into a really busy time in life, and I'm only now getting back to where I could try to get back to it. So also he had to. Um. um we were also he was it was new for him, so I I'm. I, he's been running it for a while now, so if everything's been clean on his machine, like he's basically got a whole thing running. I think it's up on Azure, or on Amazon, AWS, and stuff like that. So if it's been happy and running, and he's been administrating it without problems, we may be moving sooner than later, which will get rid of our last SourceForge tie. Um, yeah. So that, that, that. So Blair, the answer is it's on my list to follow up with Eric in the not too distant future to ask him how well mailing lists have been going, and we may be moving mailing lists to our own domain name, like you know, users at you know users list or Wix users at wixtoolset.org, which I think will be much prettier than whatever the heck it is now. I always have to remember. I always have to look it up to remember what it is. Plus, Eric is an awesome administrator and probably can get us a better set of things on our mailing list than that. So. Um, that's all I got. We're kind of rambling. Anything else? Any other questions, comments? This is great. I just want to say that this is fantastic. This is one of the most interactive end of meetings we've had in a long time, and I'm excited about, you know, where things keep going. Uh, Sean, thank you for sending your changes and fixes. That's awesome. Um, and hope to see more. And John, they'll be excited to get more there. And Jacob, so this is great. We're growing. I mean, we may like quadruple the size of the Wix, you know. <laughs> development team here in a very short period uh, which is pretty awesome and so it will be great because there are plenty of other things we do then the only thing we're going to have to do is figure out how to get people that are willing to go do boring stuff like go fix a random bug just because it's out there and like yeah you know I should just fix that that'll be the next thing not just adding the features that they want to add but fixing the bugs that you know aren't even theirs to go get them so I was doing some of those last night or Wednesday night or whatever. What is today? I don't know. Uh, so maybe it was last night. No, it was the night before. Uh, I don't know. Does it matter? Uh, it's just all work. So anyway, that's all I've got. Bob, you got anything else? I'm good. All right. So thank you for the pull request. We're working through those. Hopefully you've seen progress on yours in various different ways. Thank you for triage. Thank you for the bugs. Fantastic discussions out there. Um, we'll see you on the mailing list. Sorry I've been a little bit absent, but I've been busy writing code and doing cool stuff along with all the other guys here. So... Uh, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day, afternoon, evening, weekend, all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.